this video, we're just going to do a quick overview on solar panel options, whether it's a single panel, dual panel, or portable panel. All of the four-wheel campers, except for the Project M toppers, come with, they're pre-wired for solar. They have a plug on the roof of the camper, and they have a plug on the rear wall of the camper. The Project M toppers, you have to order the pre-wiring package to have lights, fan wiring, solar wiring installed, but most people are choosing that. But if you're getting a regular slide-in camper, a shell model or a flatbed camper, it's gonna come pre-wired with a plug in the roof and a rear wall. You can put in your own solar system if you want. You can order it from us. We offer a 160 watt panel on the roof. It comes with a charge controller and the monitor for it. If you find yourself parking in the shade a lot of the times, go to kind of the go-to, most customers choose roof mounted first. And if they find themselves needing more power or if they're parked in shady areas a lot, they'll also add a portable panel. We use the Overland Solar 130 watt portable panel for it. You can put that out in the sun, plug it in with the cord. So now you have two sources of recharging your camper batteries. In 2021, we started to offer dual solar panels on the roof, two 160 watt panels. This is a single, but we have room on some models, not all models, some models, to install dual solar panels on the roof. That would be flatbed campers and Granby models. Granby full-size truck, long bed, eight foot box. You can do two roof mounted panels and any of the flatbed models, we have room on the roof to do two 160 watt panels. Inside of the camper, there is wiring in the kitchen cabinets and near the battery box area. We'll show you that in just a moment. Um, but that's our three choices. Single panel on the roof, dual panel on the roof, portable panel, or if you want to source your own, uh, camper is pre-wired with the plug on the roof and the rear wall. We'll show you the plug on the roof, but it looks just like this. SAE, just a traditional solar plug connector. We call it an SAE plug. So if you're, this is the rear wall of the camper. If you're going to plug in a portable solar panel, you just plug this plug in here. It's nice and tight. Fits, and then take the other end of that cord. There's about 20 foot of wire here. That would plug into your portable solar panel and you can put that out into the sun. So if you're parked in the shade, you still have battery recharging going on. Inside the camper, you have your bat charge controller, the solar charge controller that's hooked up to the battery. So we use the Overland charge controller if it's just a single panel installation, we're using a 15 amp controller. If we do dual solar panels on the roof, we up that to a 30 amp controller. This is the brains behind the unit. And then the display is on the front of your kitchen cabinets here. We have separate videos that cover how to use this and all the different settings we generally Kind of recommend, it comes preset, we recommend not messing around with it too much because it has too many features and too many settings and the customers usually get in there and kind of set things at the wrong place. So if you leave it at the stock setting, we can rotate this through and we usually just put it to the battery setting and just watch your volts. A full camper battery a well-charged camper battery usually has a resting rate, about 12.8, 12.7, maybe 12.9 volts. Charging mode usually up into 13 volts and about 12.0, your battery is almost, it's 50% discharge, so it's almost completely dead for a normal battery. So you'll want your meter to be reading 12.4, 12.5, 12.6, 12.7. So we'll step into the shop and show you what's happening behind here, where the wires come in and what wires go where. 
We're now inside a camper. We figured it'd be easier to show you the inside of a kitchen cabinet so you can find your solar wiring if you're doing your own solar and system like install. Pre-wiring, there's a rear wall plug and there's also a plug on the roof. So most of the time these are labeled in here. You might not be able to see that, but it's a, that's the rear wall plug. And in these little three connectors over here, this other set is the roof wiring also going into these. So roof wiring and rear wall wiring are going into these two connectors right here. These two wires go to the back of the charge controller, positive and negative. And then the controller out, these two wires have a sticker on them that say controller. Where that, this goes into the controller out to the camper battery. So in from solar, out to camper battery. Pretty simple system. So the roof and the rear wall plug are tied together on these wiring here. And the controller out to the battery is the other set of wires. On the other side over here, we'll show you the battery area. There's no battery installed in here right now, but camper battery will live in different spots, whether it's in the front corner or in the rear. You'll have the same two wiring coming out, black and a red, got a clear plastic coating on it, and it's thinner, it's a smaller gauge than the, than the battery wiring to the truck. That looks like about 10 gauge wiring, maybe eight gauge, and this is probably a, a 10 or a 12 gauge wiring. But you can look for the similarity in the wiring that's in the kitchen cabinets and here. Positive, we put a fuse on it. Negative, we hook it. So if, the, if you can imagine a deep cycle battery in here or two, we're hooking the negative up there, positive up to that, fuse for safety, and that's pretty much it.